Have you bought some nice alternate heads or weapons for your miniatures and really tried to customise your army and make it your own? Well, you better stay away from Games Workshop's events. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking a bit about Games Workshop's new miniature rules, what you are and aren't allowed to bring when you attend one of their events or tournaments. There's quite a lot of interesting stuff here. I have been to a few of Games Workshop's events in the past, and it's interesting to note the differences and how they seem to be getting a little bit harsher when people are using things that aren't specifically bought from them, even if the vast majority of the army is made by Citadel. So all of this comes from an interesting guidance doc for Warhammer World events, and I'll link that down in the video description if you are interested in having a read for yourself. I remember reading this sometime within the last month or two. I'm not exactly sure when it was last updated, but I believe it came out sometime around the time when they announced that they were starting Warhammer World events again. Now the UK is finally starting to emerge from lockdowns, fingers crossed. Much of the PDF document is fairly standard things, things that you might be expected to see at virtually any tournament, though perhaps understandably they are taking a bit of a harder line on people using Citadel or Forge World miniatures, and even against using parts from other companies. Otherwise, they have a fair few stipulations, such as the models being fully assembled and painted. They give an example of their battle-ready standard and accurately convey the unit's abilities and war gear, i.e. pretty much what you see is what you get. Proxy miniatures aren't allowed, so just directly standing in one unit for another, but appropriate conversions are okay, and if they're anything more than just aesthetic conversions, then they do have to be pre-approved by the tournament organisers before the event. For their grand tournament events as well, Order models must be based on a current base size, and if they're far smaller than the current version of the model, then you have to be prepared to use the correct line of sights for them, perhaps like knowing the rough dimensions of the model, and being comfortable with what you can or can't hide behind, and that sort of thing. Mostly that's fairly standard stuff, there are just a few ways that Games Workshop's official events differ from tournaments run by more independent parties. Perhaps the 3D printed and third party bits thing is the most interesting though I do find their restrictions on painting to be a little bit harsh as well. Basically, if the models are painted a certain way, say you've painted your miniatures as salamanders, you must use the appropriate army's rules for salamanders, you can't say count salamanders as ultramarines, in the same way that you can't proxy models. This one has always just sat a bit weirdly with me. Whenever I'm playing a more competitive game, I like to think that I'm more interested in the actual rules interactions, rather than the way that the models are aesthetically painted. I do see the point that, say, if you have painted an army that clearly looks like salamanders, people will be expecting people to use the rules for that faction, and they might take it as a bit of a curveball if you're using different chapter tactics. At the same time, though, I do feel that if people have been spending a whole load of time in making a really lovely painted salamanders army, it does seem a bit harsh to that person to say that you can only ever use the rules for that one chapter for the army, whereas some person who's just slapped a quick code of a generic colour scheme on a space marine list they get far more powerful options to build lists around, they can choose anything that they want to. I feel like that's a tournament organising dilemma that might well split the community a bit. I'd be interested to hear your take on that down in the comments. Also, they do have the rule that if you're using multiple detachments, say you are running Eldar and you wanted to have two different detachments from different craft worlds, they say they must be painted visually distinct from each other and must have a different colour scheme. They don't specifically go into saying exactly what is acceptable, but they say that just painting the different colour of the base rims isn't acceptable, or marking them out with any sort of counters or loom bands, which I believe people tended to use a bit in tournaments for a while. Again, I do kind of feel that this is tying games' rules to the way that models are painted. For me, when I'm playing something, provided everything's clear, say a painted base rim would do that, I'd be perfectly fine at playing against an army that's all run as one colour scheme, provided I can easily tell the difference between the armies that are in one detachment and another. Indeed, I sort of think it might be preferable to play against an army that's gorgeously painted in one cohesive colour scheme, as opposed to someone who's had to quickly repaint half their army because they want to run different rules on some of it. Again, that's just my own personal take on that. Feel free to let me know if you feel different down in the comments. Really though, I think that the most interesting and perhaps harshest bit is that you can't use third party pieces in the miniatures at all. I remember their guidance from previous events, saying that their policy on miniatures tended to be, say, if 90% of the miniature is made from Citadel or Forge World parts, then other bits are acceptable. Now they have a specific rule to say that any parts that are made of cast miniature parts must be from either Citadel or Forge World. So say, if you'd bought some fancy heads to customise your army, then that wouldn't be allowed to be played. The thing is that this really happens quite commonly in 40k. 
For example, I know quite a lot of people like to run guardsmen with different heads to represent different regiments, particularly since Games Workshop stopped supporting a lot of the models they used to run in metal. You can get custom guard heads that look a bit like Valhallans or Talarn from companies like Victoria Miniatures or Anvil Industries. They don't really change the majority of the model from being a Games Workshop model, but they do just add your own take on it and can add a lot of theme. I can see why they might want you to not run the entire model from a company like Victoria or Anvil. After all, they do have to try and encourage their own sales, and they don't want their tournaments flooded with other people's miniatures. But provided the vast majority of a miniature is a Games Workshop one, then it still kind of shows that you've bought the model and paid your money to them. They do generously make an exception that it excludes generic hobby things, such as brass rods, plastic card, or wire, but it does include things like 3D printed parts that you've bought over the internet, or anything that is a cast miniature part made from a third-party manufacturer. I imagine that that means that quite a lot of people's armies up and down the country are no longer strictly eligible to playing in Warhammer World at Games Workshop's events, particularly if they've consistently used a different head type or something, compared with Games Workshop's own ones. Interestingly enough, they get even more detailed with the rules for 3D printed parts themselves, and they weirdly make the distinction as to whether or not you've designed the parts yourself and printed them, or whether or not you've bought third-party ones. They say that if you've gone to the trouble of designing and printing your own parts yourself, then it's essentially the same as sculpting something with green stuff, and it will be allowed to be played in the army. If, however, you just buy ones that are commercially available, then they are banned. Apparently, if organisers spot any 3D printed parts, they'll ask you to prove where you got them from, otherwise face miniatures being removed from events. I do kind of find it hard to imagine exactly how that sort of exchange would go down. Once you've got a part painted up on a model, it's going to be hard to prove whether or not you made it yourself, or whether you bought it from a third-party supplier, unless it is one that Games Workshop can easily search online, and maybe a tournament organiser could show you, yes, that's exactly where you bought the part, and therefore your model is not allowed. It does seem pretty weird, though, that arbitrarily some parts could be allowed, and some parts could not be allowed, depending on whether or not you've paid money for them. Aside from their rules being stricter, Games Workshop will be enforcing them in the same way as most tournaments. Basically, if you field illegal models, then you will be asked to remove them from the tournament, that is likely to mean that you're not going to be able to play any further games or win the event. I'm certain that if I had used a whole load of alternate heads on my miniatures or other cool parts that I'd found off the internet, it would be a massive turn-off to turning up to Games Workshop's events with them. Sure, maybe you might get away with it for a few small pieces, but I wouldn't like to have the threat hanging over me of basically being told to pack up and go home after paying a lot of money to attend an event and also travelling there. I guess it's no big deal if you haven't used any third-party parts at all, but for those that have, it could really limit what sort of miniatures that they could field. Certainly would make me a bit more keen anyway to take part in events that aren't just run by Games Workshop, and maybe attend plenty of the other independent tournaments, which are by far the largest share of the market anyway, I suppose. So anyway, look forward to hearing your thoughts on the rules pack. Is this a bit too draconian? I certainly can see why Games Workshop wants to encourage use of their own miniatures, but I must admit I prefer the old system, where they'd allow a certain amount of miniatures to be made by third parties, even if not permit entire third party models. In any case, I look forward to hearing what you have to say. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, I will try and keep these general 40k discussion videos coming, I tend to have new content coming out pretty much every day. Finally, if you would like to help keep these videos coming and help support the channel, I would just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description below. Making all the videos does take a fair amount of time, and if you are enjoying regularly, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, such as seeing certain new videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next for the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.